Welcome to week four of Athletes Unlimited. 44 players from around the globe have come to Dallas, Texas, bringing top shelf volleyball talent. With just two weeks of our season remaining, the competition is getting heated. Three captains are familiar faces. Kills leader, Karstalo. MVP and points leader, Jordan Larson. And highball hunter, Betania De La Cruz, who sits atop the championship standings. Newcomer Kelly Hunter has set her way to a captain seat with a 9-0 record. On the back stretch of season one, every moment counts. Every dig, ace, pass, kill, every point. Will the captain stay on top? Will a team once again go undefeated? The penultimate week of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball starts now. Tonight's match is presented by GEICO. We welcome our worldwide audience to the Big D, that's Dallas, Texas, for Team De La Cruz taking on Team Low. Inside Fair Park Coliseum, that has been our home, and welcome again, Kevin Barnett, alongside my partner, two-time national team captain, Salima Rockwell. Salima, second match of the night for us, first match between these two teams, first trip for them into the, the battlefield together. What one thing will this match hinge on? Well, I tell you, it's all going to come down to passing. So each team has one extremely terminal attacker. You've got Batania De La Cruz on one side, who's number one on the leaderboard, and you have Carcelo on the other, who's number one in kills. So if they can pass, they need to get the ball to other people. That's what's going to be important. We're going to be sending you down to the floor during this one. What will you be looking at? What's easier to see from floor, from floor level? Well, what I love about the floor level is being behind the court. Behind the court is kind of that coach's eye view. You can see everything develop in front of you, the, the offense, the defense, and that's what I like to see the best. All right, let's take a look at our Geico leaderboard. Of course, it is an individual championship chase. Jordan Larson on the strength of her victory, 180 team points, and maybe some MVPs voting in on top of that. But Tanya De La Cruz behind for now, but just starting. Well, it's going to be an important match tonight. Batania De La Cruz it behind, but if they win this match, they get a full sweep. I mean, it's going to really depend on how things play out, so it's going to be really interesting to watch how things flush out on the top of this leaderboard. Batania De La Cruz and Carstelo, both captains multiple times, and they lead their teams just a second time for Carstelo, hoping to better her first trip as captain. Well, Carstelo is back for a reason. She's leading the league in kills, and she has an arm that is unbelievable and very difficult to stop. So Carcelo needs to rally the rest of her team around her to have success this evening. Yeah, speaking of an arm, Batani De La Cruz. Well, Batani De La Cruz has, has shown everyone why she's at the top of the leaderboard. She got it done at the net with her attacking, of course, with her blocking and her passing and defense as well. But she was able to lead her team. That's what I loved about Betty De La Cruz, an excellent captain that led her team to those victories. This is first versus third. Pretty good gap between the top two, Jordan Larson, Batania De La Cruz, and the rest. Yeah, and that's significant. You know, you look at it's tight at the top, but it's really going to be interesting when they get the win points to see if anyone can catch up and who's going to overtake whom in that maybe five and six position spot. If you just joined us, let's take a look at how the points break down. 180 team points available, 40 for each set victory, 60 for the overall. You, the fan, can participate in the MVP voting along with the players from the match. That will determine those three slots. And then every action from the start to the end of this league, five weeks, has a plus or minus attached to it. Before we get started, let's take you down on the floor with Cassidy Ligman uh, and the zoology of stretching. Shayla's like, why is it all its animals? Cats, camels, monkeys, frogs? <laughs> Pigeons. Cobras. Oh, yeah, the monkey. The worst one. The worst. There it is. <laughs>
Athletes Unlimited is presented by Guaranteed Rate. Nice little flyover of Dallas, Texas for our worldwide audience here on a Saturday night. For Team Low, Simone Abbott returns at outside hitter position coming off her best performance of the season. Deja McClendon hoping to provide some ball control for this squad. And on the other side for Team De La Cruz, once again the captain, Bethany De La Cruz, she has been a regular. This is her third trip to crafting a team, a completely different squad. She picked Molly McCage to start, and Liana Sabeldin will also be in the middle. Let's bring it in before we get going. Hi, my name is Beluka Akronel Gunderson. Congratulations on the inaugural season of Athletes Limited. Ladies, you're revolutionizing the game of volleyball and inspiring so many along the way. Best of luck, and I'm so excited to cheer you on. Faluka, one of the great people you'll meet in the sport of volleyball, not just one of the most terrific performers in the middle blocker position. Of course, an outstanding career at Stanford, multiple time All American, and then on to Team USA, bronze medalist in Rio, looking for more coming up in Tokyo. As Cassie Lickman gets us underway, the gold of Batania de la Cruz for the first time. McCage comes back and kills that ball. I think we should have had a call one way or the other there. With that back row setter and a front row attacker contacting the ball, but it is moot. Team Dela Cruz, 1-0. Since Lima Rockwell down onto the floor, we'll check in with her in a moment. Good opportunity here. Starts to low. Oh, not yet. Tupac with the save. Not the second time. Touch, but no dig. Taylor Morgan with the kill. Point. Team low. And this is what it's going to take. It's going to take Taylor unbelievable Morgan. defense and scrappiness on both sides to be able to balance out the attack of each offensive team. Good weapons on both sides. There, a miss. Cross a little way off the net. Molly McCage, the most efficient attacker in the league. Number Man. five in goal. Did you see that dig from Cassidy Lickman? This dig is perfect. Handles the ball perfectly to the setter, and McCage able to score down the line. I asked Molly McCage, I said, has your performance here made you give second thoughts to playing again she said oh absolutely <laughs> Excellent. absolutely she's got a couple of contract offers a little inside step there for Nia Grant a nice play and a nice little wrinkle for Nia Grant starting on the left side of the court you're going to see her hanging out waiting and then comes in off one foot to hit that front side but cage at this point fielding offers from Germany as well as Italy as Carson Lowe puts that one into the net Here's a look at Molly moving to the Ventura area, originally out of Spring, Texas. She and fiance Scott are going to move a little bit further up the coast from the valley out to the edge. Scott Kevorkin, a career at UC Irvine. Tough serve saved by King for the moment, but they cannot get a hold of it. Wow, watching this serve from this perspective, kind of behind the court, there's a ton of pace on this ball. She's driving this ball directly at Rosado and not just free balling it to her. She's driving it with pace and with some movement on it. A switch up at the setter position for Team De La Cruz, who had Kelly Hunter the last two weeks. This is Samantha Silliger Swenson serving again. Nice overhead set to Shayla. Low from the other side, so working pin to pin, Team Low. Well, I like this set by Brie King. She has that rhythm of the ball that Carster Low needs quickly, right in the right spot. That was the first draft pick, Brie King, number 26 in blue of Carster Low. When you are the hammer, go get the setter. That's it. 
inside kill. That is Shayla Castro Basioli. Shayla Castro with the kill point. Shayla on the comeback trail. And we've seen that just while she's been here, Salima. Yeah, and it's nice to see her get better and better every single week. But you know, the one thing she never lost is her vision, her IQ, her ability to lead and just win. That's what she does well, and that's what you're seeing combined with her ele the elevation of her game. A service from Batania de la Cruz. What makes this serve so difficult? You know, it's it's not just the pace of it. It has some weird and odd spin on it. She moves her hands in different directions, and that's what we well, asked her. Hey, do you just hit it hard? She goes, no, I hit it where I want it to go. Like she has full intention of where she's serving this ball. That was her ninth ace of the year, nearly the 10th on the very next play. Sebeldin. Both middles involved right away with Samantha Seliger Swenson and Team Delacruz. This is where that ball coming hard down the sideline from the serve is a challenge for Team Lowe, but De La Cruz able to convert. That was a back spinner right to the face of Dolly Rosado. And another ace serve. There is the 10th of the year on just 13 errors, and never mind a ridiculous amount of pressure from number 81. Talked to some members of Team Low throughout the week, said, hey, passing might be an issue for us. That proves true early. McClendon, no swing. Tupac Castro. There's Carstolo, 8-4. And the thing about that set is this isn't a perfect pass staying in system. This is a ball that's moved all the way across the court. And you watch Bree King get there and fling that ball back there to Carcelo, just keeping her in system every single time. Carcelo comes in hitting 330, averaging over five kills a set and leading the league in overall kills leading into this weekend. As Molly Lohman, who's become a regular serving sub, misses. Taylor Morgan now in the front row, playing middle blocker for Team Low. We'll see Morgan go behind on a slide here. Marcelo coming up the middle. Good touch tap back. Lickman can't cover herself, trying to put that one into the block. Well, I think that's a really good point. A lot of the outsides, uh, these passing outside hitters that have great vision, they just, when the ball's tight, they just try to hit it easily into the block and then cover themselves to have a better swing. She wasn't able to cover herself on that, that play, but that's what she was looking to do. Yeah, she caught the heel in the side of the hand of Bree. Well, actually, if Karsta, then in that case, that ball goes down the line from Shayla Castro. So I mentioned Shayla's on the comeback trail, hoping to rejoin the national team of Brazil. Well, she just gets on this ball so fast. That ball's all the way out to the antenna, and she gets on it quick. She's a two time gold medalist with Brazil 2008 2012. Part of perhaps the greatest generation of Brazilian volleyball players on the women's side ever. McClendon uses the hands. Well, that was a really nice swing by McClendon. Especially from this perspective, you can see her go up, look at the hands, turn her hand outside of her body to tool off the edge of the block of, of Swenson. Back goes McClendon. He said overseas, you have to be your own coach. You have to kind of identify your own game and work on it. And overseas is where she is headed. With now husband Nico, as that ball is out of bounds. And you'll see Batania De La Cruz take control of her side. That's kind of a light but direct firm touch. Can it be a light and firm touch at the same time? I think it can. Yeah, I think it can with her attitude, but yet the words are very much what you should do. Look at that. Man. <laughs> 
was so fast. Taylor Morgan was up when the ball was in the setter's hand and she was up and got on it so quickly. No chance for the reading McCage. Serving for Team Blow, Taylor Morgan. Nobody home with Lickman down the middle. And there's nothing for Simone Abbott to do with that one. Well, that's tough. That's a missed opportunity by Team Lowe. A miscommunication on the other side of the net sends a free ball over. Simone Abbott hit 440 with 17 kills in her last match. As we look at you, Salima, in your career resume, Penn State setter, 91 or 94, national team captain over 97, 98. And You've won what four national titles as a coach? I have indeed. It's been uh, it's been a fun fun career. It's been a fun time. <laughs> and now, giving you words of wisdom related to the sport of volleyball throughout this athletes unlimited run here in Dallas. Carsta Lowe, All-American, Pac-12 Player of the Year in her senior season. What was a walk-on performance as a freshman. Became a journey to the national team directly following college and a bronze medal in the Olympics. Abbott underneath it. Shayla inside of Grant. Sheila Castro said an uncle got her into volleyball. And it's been all volleyball since then. Said even at 14 or 15 years old, she wanted to go to the Olympics. And one of her first coaches said, you could go to the Olympics. No word on whether his name was Nostradamus. <laughs> Simone Abbott, there's the woman who hit 440. Her last trip with Team Lowe, she hit negative 015. What is the difference, Salima, for Simone when she hits 440 or if she's in negative territory? Well, I tell you, it starts with her from handling the ball, being in a good rhythm and looking, looking like she has confidence. You know, she gets confident from her passing, confidence from her teammates, and that's a big difference. Sky tip. McClendon through the block and down. Team low with a little life here, drilling done by just three. Some nice defensive plays by Team Low, getting some good touches on the ball. And I like that Deja McClendon isn't going for the huge swings right now. She's being smart with her swings. That was pure power there from Leona Sabelda. Just blasted that through the block. He saw Deja McClendon was there, but she was almost there. There was still some space between the block, and they were both a little bit late getting up and over. Liana Sebeldin with that, that speed and heat. We still need to get in an eye contact pepper session. Oh, for sure. She said she used to play eye contact pepper, where you cannot take your eyes off the eyes of your partner while you try and pepper. So head coach Jim McLaughlin wondered, what on earth are you two doing? I mean, it was Keegan Cook at that time, and he just decided, you know what? Do your thing. Whatever. <laughs> Go get ready for the match. I don't care. Eye contact Pepper. Give it a try. See how it works out for you, kids. But Danya Dela Cruz doesn't even need a challenge to stall things out. No, she'll just take some time, make some gestures, look at you kind of funny. <laughs> Here's Loman, missed last time she was in. This time an excellent serve. Conservative McClendon again. And a miss that time from Sheila. When you want to talk smart swings, a conservative swing, but chopping the ball at the setter, forcing someone that's the set, your hitter is out of system. You've got Lickman and, and Shayla on the left and the right, and that's a nice strategy when you don't have a perfect swing. Another tough serve, negates the middle. Well, Leona Sabeldin, she'll just clean up the jump. Yes, she will. Just jumping around like a jumping bean at the net. She just gets off the floor so quickly, just waiting for something to happen. She absolutely can elevate. 
Her number really ought to be 58, which is the number of grapes she managed to get in her mouth one boring <laughs> night in college. <laughs> Crazy. That was up from 57, the previous record. It was. Dela Cruz with the dig. Lickman there a bit early, it doesn't matter, right through the hands of Carstolo. So, yeah, Lickman comes in, hits that ball on the way down, almost like a serve. And Lowe, Lowe just kind of gets in the way of it. 16 to 12 has Team Lowe calling their first time out. Carstolo back in the captain's chair for the second time. What was the strategy? Our strategy uh, was also to have a lot of balance, a lot of fire, and um, yeah, be able to move the ball around and, you know, get Brie on her feet and really get some fast tempo in our set. Great draft recap right there. Look at the top draft picks for Karstalo. Started with the setter, Salima Rockwell. She did. She did indeed. I, I was slightly surprised, but then not really. Carson knows she's the number one kill leader for a reason. And if she can have a setter that can find her over and over again, that's going to be her top priority. Embry King, of course, is an excellent setter that everyone has recognized as one of the top setters here in the league. Now look at Lowe and King. Ranked third in the league and sixth in the league overall. And Karsta talked about the draft overall last week. Well, I wish we could just stay with one team and just stay with this team. I'm already thinking about next week and being like, who am I going to be with? Are we going to be good? It's great to be in the fifth spot because you get on a good team. I mean, I want to be in the top four, obviously. You want to be in the top four in the last week? Yeah, it's. I feel like it really helps to be a good outside in this league because you can pass, you can hit, and then. Yeah, Carstolo. Last time it wasn't the draft process that got her. It was kind of the team afterwards. And right now, look at her on the sideline. She's a lot more vocal than the first time around. Yeah, definitely. She's she's very vocal and wanting to lead her team and understanding her her role as a captain and what that means and how she can have an effect really in that sense. Tama Miyashiro working with her there. Fans, if you want to get closer to the game, we almost took you inside the huddle right there. We have Salima Rockwell on floor level, but you can join the Unlimited Club. It is free, and you can select your favorite player, unlock special access, additional content, and more. And if you want even more, if you want to be a bigger part of Athletes Unlimited, upgrade your membership for a whole year of behind-the-scenes access and join the players in voting for game MVPs and our end-of-season awards, including the Geico Defensive Player of the Year, Remember, this is all year. They're going to run lacrosse. They're going to run softball before they get back around to volleyball. You are in for a year, and you're also contributing to the player bonus pool. Do it now. Go ahead and get yourself a real membership. Learn more about the Unlimited Club by visiting AUProsports.com, clicking on Unlimited Club in the upper right. At any paid level, you vote for MVP. You can cast your vote at the end. There's Salima. Hello, I made it. I'm here. <laughs> you found me. Why do coaches sit on the end line? Why are you, four-time national championship coach, on the end line? They serve once again out of the timeout. Well, the, the easiest way to see the game is from behind the court because you can see the passers, you can see the, the blockers, you can see the offense, whether it's coming at you or going, going in the other direction. It just makes this, this view is way more easy it's just a lot easier to be able to see what's going on on the court what's happening strategy wise what is the block doing are they making adjustments all of those things you can scout and see when you're at in this vantage point there is the vantage point from the opposite side yeah we'll give you a look at the serve here and how it plays with the passing movement And wrist away, Molly McCage, despite two people being up. 
Well, and that's super impressive when you watch Molly McCage go with the two blockers. You'll see Taylor Morgan shift a little bit. She still is able to hit that ball inside the ball. 18-13, set number one. Oh, shot like the carnival duck. That's it. You might want to get yourself a pack of pencils, maybe an eraser. Wow. That's that's tough. So you watch Carcelo. This is rotation one, and her strength is over there on the right side of the court. She's running across the court, and this serve just catches her on the way out. Every opposite's worst nightmare. Low this time all the way around. Not enough power. McClendon gets a good swing, and it's out of bounds. Yeah, this is tough. When you have someone running across the court, sometimes they run short across the court, and you can jam them up serving short. But she's running deep behind the passers. And that can be trouble when they're letting that ball go out, and it just times it perfectly. Definite out call. So McClendon is four for eight, as is Karstalo. But right now, the difference aces five of them for Team De La Cruz. First error for Karstalo. She wanted that one. You can see her turn right to Brie King. My fault. Perfect set. She wound up to hit it as hard as she possibly could and missed. Abbott punches it over. You can see the elevation of number 42. Well, and there's that perfect pass. Brie King does a nice job handling the ball, and Molly McCage just gets stuck. One-on-one -on -one opportunity for Abbott on the outside. Abbott with the springs to get up and punch that one through, despite it being super tight to the net. Betty slices it through the block. So KG, that's such a great play. Dare you say McKagey of her. <laughs> and you watch her hit this ball. The second ball knows exactly what she's doing, chopping that ball just right off the edge of the block. I love the reaction from Carstolo. Yeah. She Ultimate was frustration. Not happy. Aaron Ferris checks in. She did some damage from the service line last week. She'll come this way at Rosado. Oh, she'll go straight ahead at Abbott. Abbott, good pass. Oh, near man. Grant gets involved. Big time play. Abbott staying steady, handling the ball perfectly. And look how high this set is. High and fast, Nia Grant. Uh, Nia Grant is long in the middle. Sabelden misses. So here comes Team Low. Karsten, her crew down five. Sabeldon stopped by Abbott. De La Cruz stopped by Noah. She loves that sharp cross court. She's so good at it. And, and it's hard because there's a small hole. Maybe Ros Rosado's looking at that, that angle and not inside the block. And that's what De La Cruz sees. She can chop that ball inside the block. She puts a tremendous amount of top spin on the ball. This is where they scored last time. Samantha Skelliger Swenson at the line. Grant. She's been the single biggest mover in terms of value throughout the entire league. Well, I mean, and it's everything. She's doing everything well. She's not doing a million different things, but she's steady. She's able to score when they need her to. They're getting her the ball. She was the top middle pick for Carstello. She was the number one middle pick. And she was at one point the lowest pick in the league at the middle position as Holly Tolliver checks in. The outside hit of the lefty. Oh, 
Perfect pass. Defense from Tolliver. And it's in. So a little triage to the defense here by the woman who would like to become a nurse, Holly Tolliver. Really nice job splitting that block a little bit by Bree King running Carstolo just inside that slide. That one's long. One point scored, but Team De La Cruz has gone to a set point, looking for that 40-point boost for winning the first set. Not the per person you want at the service line. Tolliver stays. Kristen Tupac, nice read, joust. One into the net goes Sabelda. Really nice play by Nia Grant, winning that, winning that tight pass game. She's flexing some muscles up there at the net. They're going to drop this first set most likely as a second set point opportunity arrives. Oh, missed wide. Taylor Morgan missed a perfect opportunity, and that will close the first set. But they trail by just five. So each player on Team Dela Cruz will take home 40 points for winning that set. Can't take those back. Second set gets underway. Will it be Team Low rallying, or will Team Dela Cruz continue its domination of Athletes Unlimited Volleyball? Volleyball isn't just the way I choose to make a living. I chose volleyball because it gives me life. Volleyball has broken my bones, taken me away from my family, and brought me face to face with racism. But volleyball? Has also saved me from it all. It's a new day in America for female pro sports. We've canceled owners. We are in control of our money, our matches, and our MVPs. This game has taken me around the world. And now that I'm back home, it's time for me to set a higher limits and to break them. My name is Deja McClendon. And this is Athletes Unlimited. Tonight's match is presented by Geico. In between sets one and two, Dallas Fair Park Coliseum. We're joined by Deja McClendon of Team Low. Deja, give us a little perspective on what happened in that first set. Why did you guys lose by five? Yeah, I think we made quite a bit of errors, quite a few errors, myself included, uh, just like easy balls. So I think we've got to cut those out um, and continue to put pressure on them with behind the line, like serving wise, we've got to make it a little bit harder for them to run middle because they've got those really great middles up there. So yeah. Well, Deja, I'm down here on the floor. I'm playing hide and seek with you guys. What do you think your key is? What is the key to winning this entire thing for you? Winning the match, winning yeah. the set? I mean, they have guns over there. We don't have to be great. We just need to be good, and we have to reduce those errors. We have to keep making them play. So um, we just got to keep getting that ball back over the net. How would you characterize the chatter mid-set on your side? It looked pretty animated from everyone. Um, yeah, we're trying to keep the energy high uh, and still communicate. Right now, it's like meaningful communication because we are talking a lot, but not a lot of information is getting put out there. So, um, yeah, and staying positive because we have to stay that way in order to push against these big girls. All right, we're back to 0-0. Zero, zero. Good luck. Thank you. Second set on the way. This has been Navigating the Wind, presented by Mariner Wealth Advisors, helping you navigate your financial future. Highlights from Deja McClendon. It was a conservative start, as you mentioned, Selena Rockwell. 
Yeah, I mean, she was being smart with the ball and trying to take really effective, it doesn't have to be super powerful kills, and I think she knew that's what she needed to do to, to keep the errors low and to be tactical with the ball. But they're going to have to start putting the ball away, getting some big swings, getting some bigger swings from all of their attackers uh, moving into the next set. Two-time national champion, four-time All-Big Ten selection, Deja McClendon. And four for eight here. You mentioned no errors, no balls into the block. We'll see what she can do in the second set and get her team back on top. Speaking of being on top, you want to be on top of our Geico leaderboard. Jordan Larson up there with over 3,000 points now, but Dani De La Cruz has commenced the chase by winning that first set. But Dani has been taking home a ton of team points. That actually powered three members of her team from last week into the top four. Well, she, she's just done such a nice job of leading her team and getting them to the win. Let's check in with Tamari and see what coaches are looking for with their perspective of the game. The coaches and the captains, I think sometimes we're also referred to as facilitators. I think we just try to be helpful to them in whatever way possible and giving them almost that non-emotional look, that pretty objective look at what's actually going on. And you know, they, a lot of them have just been players all their life. And, and so just thinking about the game in a slightly different way, you know, how would you set up this rotation? How would you look at the matchup this way? What's important, what actually matters in a match and reminding of these, uh, of these little things, I think has been really big for me. And also just to see some of the, the th thought process in some decisions from the captains and honoring that and like I think AU they want to empower the girls to do that you might know her better as Tama Miyashiro 2012 Olympian and silver medalist with Team USA two-time national defensive player of the year one Grand Prix three times. A Grand Prix is a huge worldwide tournament held every spring. It's now called VNL. The Grand Prix title used to be on the women's side. She's been assistant coach for Team USA and been with a club in Stuttgart for a number of years as an assistant now. One of those level-headed people in the game, One, a person you want receiving next to you when it's all going bad, Salima. Well, absolutely. She she has such an amazing demeanor and, and just how she carries herself and plays the game. But really that eye for the game that you, you talked about, just how she sees it, how why she's coaching, why she's in the sport. She sees the game at such a high level, but not so high to make it complicated. I think that's what I really like about having conversations with Tama about her role here at AU. Tom, a part of maybe that first generation of players that played libero full time saw that as their job, as their position, not being a converted outside hitter when the job first opened up in 1998 when the libero became a thing. It took a number of years before you had a generation of players who had played libero from the jump. The cage is stopped. Here's low. She'll tip on a perfect ball. I like that. I like the changeup. You don't see it much with Carcelo, especially on a perfect set. She goes high from an extremely high contact point, tipping this ball over the top of the block. Swenson from her knees finds Lickman. Here comes a good opportunity for Team Low. Cleaned up by Taylor Morgan. And I tell you, it's so tough to defend this ball, not just because it's so quick, but Taylor Morgan sees the block. She's just messing with Molly right now. I'm going to hit this way. You're going to have to guess. They have to guess when they're one-on-one. -on -one. And she's just hitting in the opposite direction. Three kills now for Morgan. High deep to the back line is good. This is our second match of the night. First match featured Aurie Cruz having an outstanding start 
to this fourth week. Ari, what went right for your team? What went right for you on the outside? You were going high through the block, high over the block. Anything you wanted went down. Yeah, um, just like a lot of concentration and like, you know, try to do my game as possible, like control and try to help the, the team so we could like transition once again. So all the balls are like coming in. Can you contrast the vibe from last week's team to this week's team? What did you immediately notice was different when you got in the gym on Tuesday? Um, like, we're like more like um, veterans like players. So we know like how to play like between like each other. So playing like more control, like um, getting the out of system better. So that's one of the things that we demonstrate today. Like how to control like our defense and just like go rip like the attack, you know, like and out of system and I like, play with the block. Yeah, Audrey, talk about the leadership and the captainship of Jordan Larson. How is she leading this team? What does she bring that's so, that makes her team so good? Um, just a lot of, you know, calm and like confidence like in between like each other. And like everybody has their space, you know, everybody has their the square to do, to do their job. So I think that's like what she motivates each one of us to do, to do our thing. Thanks, Aury. Appreciate the time. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right, Aury Cruz, who had an outstanding night, contributing to that 75-55 overall victory for Team Larson, a perfect 180 team points taken. Team Lowe, while we were talking to Aury, scored a couple, but they're back out of balance here. Pancake. And a nice chip from Abbott. Carstolo with some pace and it works. That started with that pancake by Dali Rosado, seeing this ball just coming right over the top of the block, flying in there for the pancake. And of course, when McClendon can handle that ball perfectly, that rhythm set to Carstolo. By rhythm, you mean incredibly fast. Yeah, <laughs> really fast. Other people in rhythm that doesn't move that quickly. No, it's like a staccato. <laughs> <laughs> Abbott trying to go inside, could not. How about this time? Higher and to the corner. Man, I love that comeback by, by Abbott. Taking a big cut, getting blocked, and then adjusting on that second play, going high off the hands of the block. I'm 5-2, team low. Betania, same swing, this time towards the line. Betania De La Cruz with the kill boy, Team De La Cruz. Soon to be two-time Olympian, Betania De La Cruz. Taking the same group from Dominican Republic to the Olympic Games once again. What will be nine years later from their appearance in London. down the line a burner Simone Abbott with the kill. and I tell you that's not her normal ball that you would see this high kind of a little bit more hang this is a fast ball all the way to the pin she beats the block with her speed that's gonna be four for ten for Simone Abbott number 42 in blue no errors has not been blocked playing defense now Whoa, so fast in transition. Nobody runs it that quick. I tell you, I love that set by Brie King. She's facing, facing the net. I'm on the other side of the court now, on the side of Team De La Cruz, and she flings that ball back there for Carcelo. Abbott comes up short. So Simone Abbott looking to find her groove. She's in it once again, continuing from her previous match. Good pass off Dela Cruz. All right into the net. Tough for two reasons. Number one, the miss and the point. Two, you keep number 81 at the line. And you watch this arm and the hand of Betty Dela Cruz on contact and where she's going with the ball. It's not just straight ahead. There's always some action on it. Yeah. 
Whoa, this time out of the middle back. Tell you, so much spin and pace, but I tell you, Rosado doing a really nice job of handling that ball. It's a big side out for them in that time. Nia yeah, Grant sends one into orbit, and then we now have 8 6. I was thinking about passing it, it was heading towards me. Oh, straight down. Free kick. We've seen that move from her multiple times now. Yeah, she's really good at that. When the ball's tight and taking her towards the net, she just elevates with both hands. A lot of times you see a setter go with one hand or maybe even try to set that ball. It was a really nice job turning and just throwing that ball down. Chip shot picked up by McClendon. Abbott with the save. A beauty. And the block. Said they wanted to keep the energy positive. That's what's happening. A nice job and a nice finish by Taylor Morgan getting in front of Molly McCage on that perfect pass. She just kind of shifts over, gets right in front of McCage in that same play that's worked before. She was all over. Cross court. That's the one Shayla missed a little bit earlier. I'll tell you, we can't forget about Shayla Castro. Getting that ball back there to her on speed, with speed, which Samantha Seliger Swenson can do from anywhere. Shayla Castro can get on, get on quick. Shayla now in a position to be a role model for her when she joined the national team. It was Fafal, who was a five time Olympian for Brazil. Kill from Morgan, who's having her solve the breakout match. Tell you, Morgan is just up and available early. Free King just has to kind of tee it up there like a like a golf ball. Just here it is. She just hits it right out of her hands. Oh, T with a dig by McClendon. Back row, Betty chips it. And the defense cannot handle it. So of all the big swings in that rally, man, it is the chip shot that finds the floor. Well, and you see Rosado wants to take control. It's a down ball. She knows it's coming, but she ends up really cutting off Deja McClendon in the middle back and creating a worse angle on the ball. People want to know on Twitter where you're at, Salima. I think we should make you wear a red and white stripe. <laughs> I am currently behind Team De La Cruz on the end line. Don't know if you can see me or if anyone's. Just off the left side of the current look. Look out. Now. Oh, my goodness. There she is. Hey, I'm everybody. <laughs> okay, this is weird. That's so cool. I'm just going to keep looking at that camera. I don't know if it's still looking at me, but. We're done with you. Back to play. <laughs> <laughs> off the hands of McClendon with the touch, but no one can get there. A lot of balls are just out of the reach of the defense on the low side. So when people talk about quality of touch, what do they mean? Well, it's not just playing a ball defensively and keeping it alive. It's a, it's a ball that a setter can get under and really run the offense. So it's a quality. If you shank a ball and one goes off the court, another one goes off the court, the quality of the touch is how well do you actually play the ball. Abbott off fairs, former teammates. Man, I love this set by Bree King. This ball's pushing her back. She's almost all the way to the other antenna, and she still flings that ball out there. She's creating so many one-on-one -on -one opportunities for her attackers right now. Doing a really nice job running the offense. And a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Samantha Silliger Swenson. It's a good spot to put Simone Abbott. As you look at Bree King working for her side, she'll be blocking first in that front row. 14 9, timeout, Team Dela Cruz.
The Hypervolt percussion massage device and Normatec compression systems are just some of the Hyperize products our players have been using in the Athlete Innovation Lab. A proud partner of Athletes Unlimited, Hyperize has been getting help getting our athletes move better, live better, and be better on the field. In this case, on the court. My name is Audi Cruz. My name is Lauren Gibmeyer. Ebony Wannibill. I'm Deja McClendon. I've been playing volleyball for 14 years. As a female pro volleyball player, you deal with agents telling you how much you're worth or how much you're not worth. Sometimes I feel like I'm not taken as seriously um, as an athlete as maybe some of the male athletes. Specifically as a female, there's a lot of criticism about the way we look the way we act. We making like the same effort and like the same sacrifice like as any other sport. Equal pay, visibility, uh, promotions. I want them to put us in the spotlight the same way they do the boys. That's why I'm over the moon that we now have a pro volleyball league in the United States. I love how Athletes Unlimited is finally giving us the chance to be seen nationally. I think Athletes Unlimited has really opened the doors and I hope that that continues in the future. I see this league as the start of something really, really special. Every athlete in the league identifies a nonprofit partner with whom they will cooperate throughout the season. At the end of this year, the Give Lively Foundation will make a grant equal to 50% of that athlete's end of season bonus to that nonprofit partner. Here's Erica Handley on her cause. The Furball Farm Pet Sanctuary is owned by a close family friend of mine. She is in the volleyball community, but her dream since she was a kid was to own a sanctuary that brings in cats and saves cats from shelters that are going to be euthanized, either because they're too old, they have bad behavior, or people just can't take care of them. So what she does is she rescues them and brings them to her sanctuary where they can either live the rest of their life there or she rehabilitates them and gets them available for adoption. Erica Hanley's cause, we are a sanctuary for cats who are deemed unadoptable due to behavior. We make every effort to rehabilitate each cat and we hope to be able to find them a forever home if possible. If not, we are their forever family. Played at Minnesota before going on to the Finnish Cup and on to the Czech Republic. As we look at the leaderboard here, who's moving up? Karsta Lowe in at that third spot still. Kelly Hunter in at number four. So if you were to do it right now, Bethany Dela Cruz would be back in second. But we would have the same captains. Speaking of cats and the Czech Republic for Erica Hanley. She wanted to foster cats overseas. and brought in a cat out of the rain. She put up some lost signs and eventually found the cat. She named it Happy, but she eventually found the cat's owners who were not very happy that she had stolen their cat, as they put it. But the, those owners got over it quickly. Two weeks later, they came back and said, um, we're going out of town. Could you cat sit for us? <laughs> Such a good story. <laughs> Eric Anley, uh, sure, no problem. <laughs> Rosano, perfect spot. Karsta covered. Free ball coming. Abbott with a full head of steam. Rally of the match. Low. Shayla Moore defense. Inside for the kill. Oh, man. I, I don't even know where to start with this. That was an unbelievable rally. But this dig by Shayla Castro right on the money. An unbelievable swing. We talk about angles that don't seem like they actually exist. This is one of them. On with a nice dig, i.e. Tupac. Again. 
What a set to the outside, but the roof is there. Abbott, tight. Good push. Carsta off the hands and out of bounds. 16-10, a hard fought point for Team Lowe. Man, some unbelievable plays by Kristen Tupac. Huge digs on this side of the court. Keeping the ball alive, but it's Carsta Lowe finishing the play. One of the fun things about this league is watching athletes play with one another with Shayla Castro and Jordan Larson last week. This week, another pairing of Olympians, Shayla Castro joins Batania de la Cruz. And she's the only opposite on the roster. That one rejected. Someone will get credit for stuffing Liana Sabeld in there. Oh, I saw Nia Grand. I think, I think it was all her. They're talking to each other about who, who's, whose move that was. And you see Holly Tolliver has moved over. She, those last two serves are coming from this side of the court. Really targeting that cross court serve to Betty De La Cruz, trying to get her out of the play. Now still in the play. It's hard to get number 81 ruffled and out of the offense. It really is, and that, and that, that was their intent. They were going for it, trying to, trying to force her out of it force her back a little bit, but that's what she does so well. She's still able to score. Tolliver back to the bench. And to the service line goes Bethany De La Cruz. Her team trailing by six after winning the first set 25-20. I'm Kevin Barnett up in the booth. Selena Rockwell wandering throughout the arena. Will there be a second touch? Just barely. Someone get Dolly out of the bank. Sharp cross court from Shayla. Shayla Castro with the kill. Was that an imaginary angle? Yes, it was. It did not exist. I'm right behind her thinking she's about to get stuffed or hit this ball out. She crushes it. Sharp cross court. Bree King on the right side. You watch her try and set up the offense. They'll need a pass first. Lowe covers herself. This one will go to McClendon. Oh, back to back collisions. The second one results in the ball standing on the low side. Cassie Lickman on the left side with the shot there. I mentioned that there is just one opposite. Sheila Castro on the side of De La Cruz. First time she played three matches or really any extended time at all was last week. If she doesn't last through the weekend, there are a few options. Kylie Pickrell could play opposite. Can always move middle. Cassie Lickman could play opposite. She actually said, yeah, you've been jipping me a position in college. I played four different spots. <laughs> Sorry, Cass. Yeah, that's right. Opposite, outside, libero, and setter. She played outside and setter in the same match. They ran a modified 6-2. Oh, I was a witness. Yeah, you were there for that one. I coached against her many times. She did it all, and every, every time it was different. I imagine you're in the scouting report. Wait, wait, she's passing and setting now? Come on. <laughs> Just getting silly at that point. Yeah. Betty perfectly done. Wow. Really nice tip over the top of the block. That's either wing defender. That could have been Loman, could have been low. Picking up that play, but it was super short. Still back four. De La Cruz looking for one here. Tipped on the line. The inside out tipped down the line by Cass Lickman. Man, Carcelo thought it was going out, let it go. Right after that play, you see, yep, that was my bad. That's a two point game overall match score. De La yeah. Cruz up by two. Yeah, I think Cass Lickman got a 1600 in the tipping portion <laughs> of her SAT. 
Nice dig there by Triple S. Morgan for the kill. Like Taylor Morgan has been reliable. That is now six kills on nine swings. Well, and Brie King can just count on her. This wasn't perfect. This was just off the net a little bit, but she knew she was going to be there. She goes off one foot and just fires it in there to Morgan, who is up and always ready. Yeah, and King's been finding her where she can really get some heat on it, too. Yep, she's been popping it up there. That ball's sitting up there for her. It's fast, but it's it kind of sits there for her, and she gets on top of it. One-on-one -on -one win for Shayla. Yeah, Danger, that's two gold medals going by it. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, and it's tough one-on-one. -on -one. You want to take the angle, you know, the biggest part of the court, but Shayla not with Shayla. She's going to hit it right past you. We've seen Shayla get her legs under her progressively as these weeks have gone on. <laughs> Lichtman blocked. Morgan looked like she got on that one. Tell you the energy of Team Low, but I, I like what they're doing. They're executing at a much higher level, controlling the ball better, so they're able to get the balls to the middle. But I tell you, just getting there quick, all the way, closing this block. Team Low trying to close it out, even it up. We are at 41-40 overall. Good opportunity here for the tie. They'll have to keep digging. Or just let it go wide. 21-16 has us tied at 41. And has Joe Trinzi, Team De La Cruz, and Batania calling a timeout. Salima Rockwell, I understand you uh, have found some very special items here inside the Coliseum. I have indeed. I'm at the Book of Unlimited, which is one of the most beautiful books that I've seen ever created specifically for Athletes Unlimited. The design it is beautiful. This, this book is almost 25 pounds in weight, 500 pages long. And this is where all of the, the individual winners of each each league, each sport will be inscribed along with the players that also participated in it as well. Yeah, next to that book there, you see the medals designed by Max Lang, and he's done a tremendous amount of work for famous people designing custom belt buckles and a lot of silver work for celebrities and actors and actresses. The front face represents the identity of Athletes Unlimited. The back face, the specific sport, the year, the location, and words about Athletes Unlimited vision, mission, and values on and off the court. Here's a look at the Book of Unlimited. Every player will be listed who participated. It will also archive special moments, as well as the championship standings, the eventual winner, and all that were a part of creating the first ever Athletes Unlimited volleyball season. Custom handmade, just for Athletes Unlimited. It goes between sports. It's not just for volleyball. It is opened at the beginning of competition for any one of the three seasons and then closed until a new one opens. All right, we have our series Believe You Will, which is all about players reflecting on a time of self-belief and how it eventually affected their career. Here is Kylie Pickrell. After my sophomore season, I started out at Arizona State. I ended up transferring. Um, to put it plainly, it was a very tough year. We had a complete shift in um, coaching, so top to bottom, everything was different. And we had a lot of stuff that we had to go through as a team that made it very difficult to be in the place that I was. And so I knew in order to believe in myself again, to love volleyball again. I was like, I, I need to be somewhere else. And so a teammate of mine and I, we actually followed our assistant from a year prior. We ended up at NC State together and it was like getting to fall in love with volleyball all over again. I got back to feeling like myself on the court and feeling like I was doing the thing that I was absolutely meant to in like the entire world. And it was just a really, really good feeling. 
I remember that year at ASU. It was tumultuous to say the least. But it turns out that NC State was an absolute perfect fit. All-American in 2018, Kylie Pickrell. And she came in here off the reserve list to fill out our roster. Lives locally. And contends that fish are friends, not food, from what I'm told. That was our Believe You Will, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Dolly Rosado, nice read, low. And see how the block is struggling to get there. Rosado, another nice dig. Low, right to the head of a charging Tupac. Wow, that's a nice, a nice play by Carcelo. You see that Cass pulled her hands, expecting maybe some kind of tool, and just didn't want to get tooled, and Tupac crashing in, gets caught high. Low now with the overall lead, 42-41. Backslide, dug out of bounds. But well, McClendon's got a beat on it. Maybe she gets the next one. That just got to, has to create that angle a little bit better than, than what she did, but she's right in the right spot. Back goes Lickman. Tough serve, and it's another ace. That was the big difference in the first set. If you weren't with us, there were five aces from Team Dela Cruz. They pick up their first here in the second. So much service pressure. And this is a tough one. This ball coming from straight ahead, this line-to-line -line serve. It gets on you just a little bit faster, harder to handle. That one's short from Shayla. So they got one, but it's not going to be enough. 23-18. They got lucky with that one. Ball is tipped just into the net. Well, I would like to see a tie score at the end of the second set. That's where we're at right now, 43-43. We could go to that century set where everything hangs. Full 100 points on that last set. Wow. There's McCage over and down. Again, that's a, that's a swing that you can't defend. High over the top of the block. The, the defense in the right spot for her if she's going to bounce it, if she goes deep to the end line. All right. You heard Selena Rockwell. That is the crane kick of volleyball swings. If done right, there is no defense. Fairs. Grant had to wait on that one. Ferris got just enough of it. Oh, Rosado in exactly the right spot, negated by a net touch from Carstolo. Oh, that's a tough play. Huge dig by Rosado in the right spot, just inside the block. But they're going for it. They have to they have to come up with it either at the net on a block or defensively. They're all going hard. 24-20 now. Off that service error, a set point for Team Low. Should they take this very first set point opportunity, we would be tied at 45. Entering the third. I know you at home are cheering for a century set. I know I am. There's the dig, and nobody's home! Abbott waiting to hit. Oh, man. Setter calling for help. What should happen here? I tell you what. Someone's got to call for help or make a move to the ball. That's tough with Abbott getting off the net. Someone else has to step in and make that play. Second set point. Yeah, the problem is the backup setter is the libero who just dug the ball. Abbott misses. 
third set point opportunity upcoming. Yeah, that is Abbott's first miss. She was six of 19 to that point. And you've got a tough server at the service line in Samantha Silliger Swenson. Serving into traffic straight at Abbott. Block all over Karstalo. Grant with a nice touch all the way around. Can't get it in. 24-23. Timeout coming from Tom Ishiro. Question mark. She's thinking about it. She keeps talking to her team. So hey, we got this. I'm right behind her. And Karstalo, the captain, who does have final say, as all the captains do, comes up with the timeout at 24-23. Forty eight forty four team De La Cruz you see how important it is these comebacks that used to not matter it would just be if low pulled it out one and one in the set score but no it is the overall that matters plus four right now team De La Cruz you know what else matters this is your last chance to own a piece of athletes unlimited history the first ever tops trading card set for professional volleyball it is out now you can purchase it through April 2nd at tops.com. This is your one and only opportunity to own this unique collectible set. Go ahead and get yours today. There's a look at Deja, there's Shayla. Great work done by the folks at Tops. And let's, let's learn a little more about Shayla. After we look at a Cass Lickman tweet here, swipe up to get your cards. You need to follow Cass Lickman on, on Twitter, on Instagram. This is an Instagram post. She does an outstanding job, even while she was away for a week keeping every everyone there updated all right how about Shayla Shayla and her dogs what do we know about this I have two dogs that, uh, I call them canela canela it's like cinnamon if I translate and monstring monstrinho monstring will be little monster <laughs> they are Pomeranian four years old I love them they, they are like my first kids because I have two kids also but they are younger in the beginning, because they are like small dogs, so in the beginning my dogs were really scary because they don't have a lot of, they just smash the dog <laughs> in the beginning, they were afraid. But now that my kids are two years old, they start to understand that they have to go slowly. So it's really cute to see, they, they really love them. I think they have a really good relationship. So really, it's, it's one of the best things in my life. <laughs> Yeah, she really does have it all at this point. Husband Breno pictured there as well with the dogs and the twins. Look at some highlights of Shayla in this match. And another special opportunity, Salima, for her to play alongside Bethania De La Cruz. Well, what a neat opportunity to have the opportunity to play with Jordan Larson last week and now Bethania De La Cruz. But it's it's that veteran experience. And you look at her right now. She's talking to her setter. She's she's leading in her own way. You know, there's a reason she has two gold medals, Olympic gold medals. Shayla Castro, veteran on that team, De La Cruz. For the Horizonte, Brazil came into this match hitting 170 overall. Like I said, it's been a rising tide for her. She's currently six kills, one error on 13, no, sorry, seven kills on 17. She's hitting over 400. Finally, Lowe closes it out. Fifth opportunity to do so, and they get it done. 25-23, but they have given back the overall. They trail 48 to 45. We head into the third. Each team has captured 40 team points. We have 100 yet to go. So much hanging in the balance in our third and final set, sixth of the evening.
Special thanks to our presenting court partner, Geico. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball, of course, brought to you by GEICO. Outstanding support of all the athletes and their causes. Each athlete was asked to identify a cause. Give Lively Foundation will make a grant equal to 50% of the athlete's end of season bonus to that nonprofit cause partner. Let's learn about another one, Molly Loman. I chose 1% for the planet just because they stand for such great causes. Um, I feel like we need to take care of our earth and they stand for everything, um, land, ocean, any nonprofit organization that supports our earth in those ways. So I think it's really cool and I'd love to give them support. A variety of causes chosen throughout Team Low. Heard from Erica Hanley earlier, the Furball Farm Pet Sanctuary, Trumbull Family Fitness, Bald Girls Do Lunch for Deja McClendon. Just an outstanding group of women here stepping up in civic leadership, not just on the volleyball court. And here's Bree King on Trinity Western. A lot of you may not know a lot about that place. Trinity Western was my hometown college um, that was has the most successful volleyball program in Canada and it was my sister played there before me 10 years previously and um, it was a real like easy decision for me to go there. Everyone I loved played volleyball at Trinity um, and it was just the most incredible experience. It's a really small school with really big sports so it's real like small town feel and everyone comes out to the games and there's yeah there's just so much um, development in the sports world at the school and also your um, value as a human outside of your sport is just so important to the staff and the, the whole community of the school so I felt like I was given a real rare opportunity to really excel in the game in Canada and then also excel just as a person and I felt like just everyone at Trinity really cared about me becoming the best version of myself possible um, on the court, off the court, and that was the most like unique thing, I think. The fans in Canada are loving this member of the Canadian national team, being a part of the Athletes Unlimited family here. And Bree King Valley, you mentioned off the floor. Salima, she's an outstanding singer. As we had the opportunity to to hear her one night uh, down in that second floor lounge, an unbelievable singer. Actually, I was blown away by her voice and her guitar playing. Does her future ride in volleyball or Ooh. maybe with the church that she started with husband Jeremy called the way they're still looking for a a place post covid actual brick and mortar right now. It's all online services for people. But Bree King, a huge part of that. So we'll see where this setter is headed, if she's going to continue with the Canadian national team as they just missed qualification for the Tokyo Olympic Games, or if she goes elsewhere. Thanks to our presenting court partner, Geico. Geico doing an outstanding job supporting athletes unlimited. Presenting this match, being the court partner, and helping this inaugural season to be an outstanding success for the athletes and you, the viewer, who get 30 matches across five weeks. Kevin Barnett alongside Selima Rockwell, who has returned to the booth for this third set, which will decide the overall. I am back. I wanted to, I was trying to get in to talk to. Tama and have a little conversation with her. Didn't didn't find much space to do that and see what what really changed. What was she saying? It was fun watching her interact with everyone before the start of the second set and how how well she did. Well, I'll give it to you. I think in pretty plain terms, they gave up five aces in the first set. They gave up one in the second set. You saw the scores of those two, and they have yet to get an ace. Absolutely. Talking about Team Low. Cassie Lickman will get us underway here in the third and decider. First the low hits it wide. A little too sharp. 
Nice pass to start it off. Carson just missed that one wide. in defense, Abbott offense. Hill by Simone Abbott. I like how Deja McClendon stays deep on that ball. Plays that ball off the hands, like a transition out of it. Quick, quick swing to the pin. Transitions to one. So 49 47. You want to keep a close eye on that overall. It's worth 60 points. And we'll keep showing it to you. You can see it's visible here inside the arena for the athletes to monitor and follow. That ball hit through the hands of Batani de la Cruz. That's a nice swing by Carcelo. Betty de la Cruz not happy after that. Well, that was re that was just revenge from earlier. That was unbelievable. Yeah. Team de la Cruz. That exact swing was taken by Batani de la Cruz in the first set off of Carcelo. Yes, it was. You're looking at Samantha Silliger Swinson in the bottom right of your screen. You're looking at her block the ball. In there for some help. I think that was Liana Sebeldin. I'm going to give that to her, making a nice move there. <laughs> really? Yeah, really? 100%. Is that why she's going to ship you a present to your house? Wait till you see the replay. Okay. <laughs> Can you give that kill to her, too, or does that one go to Triple yeah. S? Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> Kill for number three. And fun for a setter to get a full cut at it. McCage to McClendon. To Malo. Wow. <laughs> well, McClow, I guess. You have to have the C in there. The captain, Carson Lowe, now serving. <laughs> Nice punch, is it enough? Yes. Oh, no. Great save. Punch by Deja McClendon, and then a little confusion on who was going to play that next ball. Nia Grant lays out, and Carson Lowe was not happy. Not happy, came out yelling at her team, we have to make that play. Well, side out on the other end is good, 5-4. Hanging tight, but you're right about the transition swings, point scoring opportunity. Just inside of the block. Shayla Castro with the kill. Point. Team Della Cruz. The captain, Matani Della Cruz, now serving. Shayla Castro now eight kills. See Sam Swenson talking to her. Still working out that communication as a setter. You can draw energy from Batania De La Cruz missing a serve. That's probably good for you. She has two aces, but at least two other near aces. And now serving. Molly Lohman. Been putting a lot of pressure on Team Lowe as Molly Lohman checks in. Was an absolute laser to low. Got away from her a little bit. Clinton blocked. Castro. 
big move by Shayla Castro. And just look at her get over the net. It's a nice move. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. Geico defensive play of the game. You just saw it, it comes at the net again. Why not? Look at that right hand turning in. Beautiful move by Shayla Castro. A little wrap around of the ball there. Not this time. Fifty-one, fifty-five. Team Dela Cruz with the overall lead. Just a one-point advantage here. Early in the third set. Side slide move. I like that. I like the high finish. Mixing it up, running people in different parts of the court. You see this right in the middle of the court. This slide when you have three hitters and you can still run a slide in your offense. It's a nice, nice run. Isolates your hitters. McCage goosenecking that thing. <laughs> Have to convert these. The captain off the face of Molly McCage. Big swing. Boy, team Had a little sub. Val Nickel was in there to try and maybe maybe block a ball. Ended up going in the other direction at the end. It's nice to see her back on the court though. Val Nickel sprained ankle in week one. Taylor Bruns subbed in immediately for her. She has rehabbed like crazy and returned to action back into the draft for the first time in this week. Dump picked up. <laughs> Tip is good. I read her like the Book of Unlimited. I wanted to say that. I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> King was just hanging out, waiting for that dump. Knew it was coming. So it's 8-8 in this set, but how critical are those points given up in the end of the second? Still trailing in the overall 56-53 is Team Low. OT dug by McClendon. Converted by Low. Big play by Deja McClendon. Digging this ball that would either score normally on a huge swing by McCage, but a beautiful layout by McClendon. Perfect to the setter. Credit Carstelo. She said, we have to have those, and now she is converting them for her side. And she did pick the right setter, apparently, because that ball is being shot back to her. Perfect. Yeah. Block to follow. Blocked by Taylor Morgan and Karsta Lowe. Unbelievable. Look at this move. Right hand finish into the court. Taylor Morgan is fired up. Timeout called. Let's give you a little look into the world of Bree King. And also, in high ball situations, I feel like that tip to the middle of the court, you did it that one time, Betty barely got there, then she's out, they set back, they hit out. It's like, okay, it's just so easy. It's yeah. all in our control. Yeah, okay. It's ours to take. <laughs> Look at our Geico leaderboard. Jordan Larson still up there, but Donnie De La Cruz, well, how important are those 100 points gonna be? I, I mean, so important. They're. Just 150, I don't even, I can't do the math. Points away from, from one another. Huge points here less coming than 200 up. Now. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> a little less than 200. Uh, it's going to be big for Badania De La Cruz and, of course, the rest of the weekend and what that, what happens. What do you do when you're a reserve and the game isn't moving quick enough? <laughs> ah, you do a little planning and make something funny. We brought our orange.
orange sleeves and we made some signs. We have three signs, but these are the only ones that really matter. 60 seconds and 30 seconds. Try to copy yeah. them as much as possible. We wanted to look like Jerry as much as we yeah. could. Yeah. The plan was like come out, be discreet, and just if someone sees us, then we roll with it. And immediately, the second we put our hands up and the down ref, had the sign actually. going, yeah, the down ref pointed it out to Jerry. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it was like everyone on both sides of the court were just staring at us and we're like, hey. <laughs> we made them laugh yeah. and we sided out immediately almost every time. We're yeah, here. and Jerry took off his, his glove yeah. actually. Yeah. And did the whole like, I love you to yeah, us. So it was very sweet. So he was really, really was happy. Sweet. And then he, he took his mitten off for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. He was trying to give us the cues. So. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, sure. how would we know when to play if he was not out there ready to go with the orange hand? At one point, I, my shoulder was burning. I mean, even, you know, he gets the little wind up going. All right. 30 start seconds. off. Yeah. Oh, 60. 60, 60 seconds. seconds. Yep. Go up. It's 60. Mm -hmm. And we drop, we drop it down. Yep. We hang out for a bit. We're here. Uh, we We're waiting. To, we up. We got to switch it up. Actually, actually, the team, the team's out there. They're limbering yep. up. We're still on 30. the side. Thirty. Right. Yep. And we time doing those down, and then he gives us the point, and we go here and wrap it around. We're out. We're out, baby. <laughs> Serve the ball. <laughs> Pickerel and Tolliver, well done. <laughs> There's so much to say with that whole piece. And there's Jerry winding it up. Wind it up, Jerry. Wind it up. So how this works is he's called a red hat, typically. <laughs> I'm not sure the history of the name, but in this case, he has an orange mitten. He holds it up to hold play until we and you, the TV viewer, are back from whatever it is we're off doing, whether it be a commercial or a little bit or something. We come back. He says, OK, wind it up. You can play again because we're ready to cover it. And there have been some long delays. The players have been <laughs> having some words about it, so they definitely have gotten to know Jerry. Well, there's just so much thought that went into that. Oh, so I mean, good. so much thought. They made the signs. They're thinking about the actions, when to do it. So good. So good. Bust out the orange sleeves, go, this is perfect. We don't even have to have an Amazon box delivered. That's great. Jerry will be signing autographs after the match in the parking lot. Karsta, again, converts once more 11-9. Perhaps more importantly, 56-57, they are back within one. You know, Kar Karsta loves low, loves this responsibility. She wants it. She wants to be the go-to. She wants to score when it's on, when it's on the line. That's what makes her such a great attacker and a great player. Service error. Service error number eight, still no aces. On the other side, two errors, six aces. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, there's so much pressure coming from the other side. That's is why even it's close right now. You want to boil a match down to one category, that'll do it. There you go. That one pushed into the middle. Bree King. Really nice job. Running this ball a little bit off the net. Sometimes that angle is super awkward and tight when they're not far away from the setter, but the ball's just off the net. But Bree King does a nice job of keeping that ball high, keeping her hands high, firing it in there to Nia Grant. Now 10 kills out of the middle collectively between Grant and Morgan. There it is, just like Bree King talked about, a tip to the middle. This time it doesn't work as Lickman goes off the high hands. But that's the right idea. I mean, you're talking strategy and you're talking, hey, how do we get Batania Dela Cruz out, force them to set somebody else right now in this situation so we can get our block set? I love that conversation by Bree King, even though it didn't result, the end result didn't happen this time. But that's that's the way you need to think of the game. Here's that straight ahead serve. Nice angle from Abbott. Betty. Trying to get it all the way to Karsta, they manage. And cross court from Shayla. And killed by Shayla Castro. can only say it so many times, those angles that Shayla hits, 
Yeah, this ball is coming so sharp cross court, the right front and right back are almost even overlapping each other. It's hard to, it's hard to make a decision on who, who's going to play that ball and how to play it. Now trending on Twitter, hashtag AU Jerry. <laughs> AU Jerry's better than Jerry the day, that's for sure. Good job by Kylie and Holly. Excellent, excellent work. They've got some signs. I saw a sign over there. There was something they had. They brought entering the match and today. Holly Toller. Maybe they brought some glasses. They have. <laughs> they may have. In comes Tolliver. Tolliver and Pickerel on opposite sides of the net right now. That one inside the block. Look how well Shayla Castro gets her feet to this ball. This ball is past set high in the middle of the court. Watch these last two steps get all the way there. And she can reach and keep that ball in front of her hitting shoulder. Back to back misses now in successive rotations for Bethany de la Cruz. A two point overall, 59, 61. Amber, good job. A little shout out for ordering your tops cards. Go to tops.com. Molly Loman's in that selection. Tough serve down the line, takes out Dela Cruz. Karsta converting again. Kill by Karsta. It's a one point ball game. My goodness, 60 to 61. Dela Cruz up by one, one point in the overall score. 20 kills for Karsta Lowe. Tell you what, she just sees the block so well in the defense. Castro. Oh, inside out. <laughs> so much experience with that, that swing. Just seeing the court, seeing the defense, and understanding where the defense is. Hitting a nice roll shot down the line. All right, two point game in theory, just 10 points to go for Carstolo. And the blue clad team low. Morgan blocked. Carsten nearly fell down, backing up. And that may have cost her. I don't know if she hurt herself. I hope she's laughing. Okay, yeah, she's okay. Uh, she's taken now 40. Four swings. Yeah, that's a lot. Talked about the workload for Ebony Wanabu last week, 40 and 39. Yeah, wow, that's a that's a ton of swings. Deja. Deja with the kill. Boy, Sneaking it through the block. Yeah, still leading in this set, but they're gonna need a couple more to get the overall. Free king now serving for team low. Still an opportunity to go to a golden set. Let's do it. Would be played to five. You must win by two, but there is a cap at 10. That would be so great. None of the personal points will be counted at that point, just to decide the overall. Karsta, yep, she got enough. Boy, team low. All important conversion there, 62-63. Looking for the tie. And Matanya De La Cruz understands. She knows the value of the set. She knows the value of getting those last 60 points as well for the overall match win. A serve! Bree King! And a for Bree King. Bree King does so many things well. And the serve. See that ball move just a little bit. No spin on the ball at all. Just strikes it right in the center. We're tied. Another tough one.
Cassidy too tight, blocked. Karsta perfectly tipped. Perfect time, right situation. Kristen Tubak, Bob back on her heels, ready to play defense. Beautiful tip over the top to finish. Had a question come on Twitter from Dan. What is the golden set? Well, that is when we play to five. If we're tied in the overall. Tip from Karstalo. That's like popping the red button on a turkey right there. You can't do it any better. Your family is happy. Your team is happy. And welcome into our position. As you look at Team Low, as so here we are in the dark. It's almost like a movie theater experience. It kind of night. is. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I kind of like it. It's kind of cozy. We're hoping for a golden set. Some of the best volleyball entertainment you will find, AU Professional Volleyball. And I tell you what, Karsta Lowe, it's been a different experience thus far. I tell you, it's been it's really been impressive how she's taken over the match, taken over her team, and really led them by her play and by leading leading them on the sidelines as well. She's done an, a phenomenal job out of system and in system, scoring a an unbelievable amount of points right now. And what about the draft where she drafted a setter first? Has that worked? Uh, that, that has paid off. That was probably the best move that she's done so far she wanted Bree King she wanted her she wanted her to set her she knew that she knew how to set her exactly way she wanted the ball from anywhere and that's the thing it's one thing to be a perfect pass and get you the ball the right ball but man when she's off the net and on the run it's still the right ball yeah don't take Slama's word for it Karsta Lowe will tell you the same thing <laughs> look at Bree King played for Tom Black on that Canadian national team. Tom Black, coach at Georgia. Head over to AUProsports.com, get your athletes unlimited gear, and don't forget to follow on social at AU Pro Sports for exclusive insider content. And yeah, you want to be on there. Everybody here at the Athletes Unlimited volleyball venue doing outstanding work, pushing out content to you all week, not just every one of our weekends. And there is the golden set played to five points, win by two, but we'll be capped at 10. I mean, the dream scenario is we're tied at the end of regulation. You go to a golden set, then you go to 9-9, and it's a golden ball. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In any case, 64-63, team low now with the lead. Another opportunity. Book it. Write it down. 2015 and 65 63. They wanted to remain positive. They were pushed. They've responded. Italian Tolliver in there, playing in the middle back, digs this ball perfectly. You know where they're going with it. Deja McClendon one on one wins. Big drop by Deja McClendon. Starts lined up perfectly, then makes a drop into that. That hard angle that we talked about before. Right on the back line for an ace, Bree King. Thank you, Canada. Everyone, oh, Canada. Everyone thought that ball was going in. Let it go. Called it out. Up by four in the overall score right now. Team low. Miss, but work done. And perhaps even better news with Bree King being at the line, she will now be in the back row for three rotations. Your main offensive weapon is in the front row. 23 kills already for Cars to Low. We'll see if she can get this ball to her on the run. You need three without giving up three. Got to get to 25. Your lead in the overall is just three points. Deja misses. I saw the net move. There was a net on the play. There you go. No argument. A huge break. Wow. So Tolliver will go back out. In comes Simone Abbott once again. Tolliver, successful trip across the back row. Point scoring opportunity with Deja McClendon at the line for Team Lowe.
They just need this one. For the overall. No. Tipped into the middle again, confusion reigns. Batania blocked, one on one by Lowe. Set point. Substitutions for Team Lowe. Entering the match, number 15. Yeah, the match is not decided by any means. 24-17. McClendon with a touch. The rundown. Benny Long, but a touch call. Second. Match and set ball. Betty De La Cruz is going to do everything within her power to get her team over the edge here. See if she can bring them back. Everyone might as well just go to the left front if you're <laughs> on Team De La Cruz. Give it to Lowe. The captain seals the victory. A comeback performance, 25-18, 70-66 in the overall. What a comeback. 140 team points for Team Lowe. 40 points for the other side and Team Dela Cruz, that was one in the first set. Boy, if you came in at 16 to 12, you thought Team Dela Cruz was going to be in control. Team Low with the win. More in a moment. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on Fox Sports on line is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Beautiful job by our crew there as the 70-66 win goes to Team Low, And we have Samantha Seliger Swenson on the Team Dela Cruz side. Sam, what went on from that first set? You guys dominated 25-20, had a bunch of service mm -hmm. aces. What flipped the script? Yeah, I think we kind of let up on our service pressure a little bit in the second and the third. And, um, you know, Team Low was making some mistakes in the first, giving us some breaks. So I think that they picked up their game in the second and the third. And, yeah. You're going to have an opportunity to kind of reassess things and, and talk about it as a team and, and review things. What are you mm -hmm. looking for moving forward and what the adjustments do you need to make tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I think just siding out and not, you know, letting the other team get on runs and keeping our service pressure throughout the whole match. All right, Sam. So tomorrow morning in training, what do you want to work on personally? What do you need personally to be better tomorrow night to help your team? Hmm. Um, I feel like defense. I feel like I wasn't in great spots tonight. Um, and if I was there, like, wasn't getting a lot of touches. So, yeah, trying to pick up my defense for tomorrow. All right, we'll see you again. Thank you. Samantha Seliger Swenson and Team Dela Cruz won the first 25 20. It would be 25 23 and 25 18 for the overall in the next two sets to Team Low. Hey, tomorrow we'll do the exact same thing all over again for you, the viewer, 6 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 2, and then right back here on digital, wherever you're watching in one of the five distribution channels. We'll have Team Dela Cruz and Team Hunter facing off, setter and former hitter in those two captains. And then Monday we'll be on Fox Sports 2 and CBS Sports Network for the finale. Team Larson taking on Team Dela Cruz, as they tend to do on Monday nights. Be sure and join us tomorrow on Fox Sports 2 for more Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. It's going to be in the evening the same as tonight, so it shouldn't be that complicated. 6 p.m. Eastern for Salima Rockwell.
and our entire crew. I'm Kevin Barnett. Once again, Team Low rallies 70-66 for the win. 140 team points and a good start to the weekend. We'll see you tomorrow.